Morning, morning, everybody. Michelle is here. I think it's a Saturday. Saturday, September the 14th, 2024. What you say? Life is, um, as they say, moving by. You know? I remember it was just, uh, sorry to put my face off the camera, but hey, you know me. I'm on the on work the docks. I do what I, I do what I can <laughs> to make things work for me. Um, but time goes by really fast, and that's why I say it's not really about time. You you know if you if you're paying attention, things are not really about time. They're more so about timing. You know the timing of moments and and why things you know turn out the way they do. So, anyway, I was uh, out and about running around because I'm going to be busy for the next couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, next couple of weeks I got things to do, places to go, people to see, um, more so things to do, more so things to do. And, uh, you know, what, whatever, that's, that's my life right now for the next, for a while. So, but man, let me tell you. I, when I was out and running around and, and handling my business and and doing the things I need to do, I came up, I, I, I went into this um, this service place and, you know, to get some service done. And I can remember walking around in the place because I had to walk in that place to get to, to another place. And um, I saw these um, older women older women uh, that were sitting on this is this to say on the left of me you know it was a it was a you know at least 10 of them 10 older women and they were sitting on the left side of me and you know sitting on the left side as I was walking in and I can remember making eye contact or just looking over and all of a sudden something just came over me, you know, when I looked over there. And when I walked out of there, you know, so what kept, what came up inside of me is that, you know, peace, peace, peace. I felt some kind of level of peace when I looked over there at those women. It was like they were in peace, you know. They were, they were just sitting there taking care of some business you know, getting their services met or getting their needs met via services. And they were sitting there and, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I felt, that's, you know, because usually, you know, I, I, feel, I felt their, their, I felt peace, you know, looking at those women and paying attention to those women. And it brought me back to what I wanted to say today. I told you, sometimes you got to keep repeating yourself over and over and over again. You have to keep repeating and, and sharing things with people, even though most people don't, they, they claim they, they're not listening, but again, you know, your consciousness, your subconscious, you know, they're the ones that paying attention, whether you say that you're not paying attention or not. <clears throat> because like I said, you can't fool your consciousness. Your consciousness has a knowing, has a knowing as to what you are supposed to do, you know, what your accountabilities and responsibilities are so you can't fool your consciousness no matter how you how you attempt to do it with messing around with energy messing messing around with magic messing around with sorcery all you're doing is harming yourself in the end but i'll let others figure that out because i think some people are figuring it out and i and i'm so thankful for that that's that's a uh, thankfulness that i that i can sense and receive and it's not like they were, they, you know, a lot of people, we, a lot of times we're misled about how we're supposed to act. That's obvious. We're misled. We're, we're, we're fed, we're fed these, these, uh, these fantasies, illusions, delusions, which a lot of us are realizing is nothing more, nothing less than smoke and mirrors. A lot of people have been lying to us about being a human being and knowing how to handle your power and your abilities. Okay, and it's not about anyone else but you. Okay, it's the workings in, inside of you. So when I saw, when I felt that peace from those women sitting over there, 
it brought me to again something that I'm going to keep advocating for. I'm going to keep uh, being an ad, you know, whatever the, whatever the term is used. I like to say to be a supporter of advocacy just pops out of my mouth, but it, in actuality, I'm a supporter. I'm a supporter, and it's of biological women. Okay, from all walks of life, I am a supporter of biological women. Okay, I'm not going to back down off of that. You know why? Because why not, right? I see the need. And for a while, for so long, I used to look in the eyes of women, and I always felt, always felt a, a sense of fear, a, fi- a sense of, you know, you know, uh, anxiety, being very nervous and, and you know, and a lot of, and you know, when I was a first ref- responder, I used to get this all the time. They said, oh my gosh, thank goodness it's you. I feel so much safer with you. I feel so much safer with you. And that's what it is about, ladies and gentlemen. It's about safety, feeling safe in your own body, feeling safe doing whatever you choose with your own body and not being so concerned about being violated and being controlled. So when I looked at those women in there, in that in that place I, I I felt that they felt they were you know and they were older women so you know that they've had some life experiences I can guarantee it you know I can guarantee it because I can you know I can tell I can look I can tell that they were working their whole they were the working class of their whole lives okay they did they did not just have a job they were the working performing class of society I can tell and look in their eyes you can look at sometimes you can look at how they are how they are you know their disposition you know their physicalness you can tell okay these these women were the working performing class of society that's that's under attack okay so I sense and, and receive that they've they are so thankful that they made it to the age that they are, okay? Because I'm, I can guarantee you, a lot of them did not did not believe that they would, okay? They, they probably they probably thought every day during that you know during the transitioning of their lives that you know everything they they were in fear of violation, okay? And I'm going to say this, and I know this may bother certain people, but it's going to be said. When I looked over to that side, on that left side, there were nothing but women over there. And then when I looked to the right, it was a combination, but mostly men. Okay? We're going to be separating like that. Whether people like that or not, because of safety. Women want safety. And they know they do not have it. They cannot make decisions about their health care. They cannot make decisions about... Uh, and so, so to me, and this is my opinion, so much attention from the medical field is fo- focused on cosmetics. You know, the, how, how you, you know, how the cosmetic side of, uh, of uh, the medical field instead of on the preventive, safe, and caring side of... Uh, of the medical field. In other words, the attention is on cosmetics. Okay, whether it's surgery to do this, surgery to do that, all cosmetic. What no matter what anyone says, it's all cosmetic. But then on the left side, you know, all they want is safety. They want to be they want preventative care. They want to feel safe in their own bodies. They don't want to be violated. And they don't want to be harassed and, and, and be told that, you know, you need to have a big ass before a society or will accept you. Or you need to have, you know, perfect teeth before people will hire you. Okay, that, that's, that's the message we're sending, especially to our young people. Okay, if you don't have a big ass and you don't have, you know, perfectly white pearly teeth, then, okay, you're going to be dismissed. And so when I looked at those women on the left side, they, they know what's to come. As you are transitioning 
and evolving your consciousness, you can figure out what the future is going to be as well. Okay? And I can tell with those elderly women that I was looking at, or older women, they, they, they know they made it to a point that most feared they would not. They knew that they were, at some point, they were safe. Because they are, they are up in age, they, they, they know, and sometime, or, you know, in the near future versus the distant, they know that they're going to be passing away and they're going to pass that baton on. And then it's going to be on, on the shoulders of their future personalities, their, whether they are reincarnation. Is there, and I'm going to talk more about that too. How you can, how you need to be very, 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 very cautious and conscious of what it means to be reborn, and how it's affecting the future. But I'll get into that at another date. But I'm just being very honest with you, and I'm gonna keep repeating this: women are in fear. Okay, they're in fear for, for the most part, from biological men. Okay that are creating this unsafe environment for them where they are looking for peace so they can take care of their children, take care of their grandchildren, take care of their great-grandchildren without all of this fear and being concerned about their personal space and safety. That's what it's about for them. These women were sitting there with peace in their eyes because they know that the end is coming for them quicker than you know the the end for you know they know that they've done what they could do and you can tell that they cared about humanity they provided services you know they could have been seamstress they could have been cooks they could have been caregivers they could have been all those type of services that are often overlooked providing love universal love for people, for children that do not belong to them, possibly, you know, they could have been teachers, you know, nurses. So that is what women are desiring, whether they tell you that or not. It's not that they have a. Uh, it's not about their sexuality, by the way, and and and, that, and that's where how de degenerate we are, you know. Because I mean, because women say, "Look, I, I just want to be by myself. I want want to be left alone." Okay, automatically it's oh they hate men or or they this or that and the other. It is downright dangerous for a lot of women to exist in the company of certain type of men. And let's just be very honest about that. Okay, very honest about that. There's no way, no matter how a biological woman is structured, she cannot take on the physicalness and strength of a man a biological man whether he is calling himself transgender or not all right let's be quite honest about that okay and then this invasion on the on the, on the safety of women you know they can't play sports without having biological men wanting to take over and come in and control it they can't go into the women's bathroom unless men biological biological men who think they're women you know, make the decisions, oh, no, I'm going to go in there and invade that. You know, a lot of it was politicized. I know that. And a lot of it was manufactured. I know that. But I've heard it from the voices. A certain high-level so-called uh, uh, pioneers of certain uh, of the transgender community wanting to make the decision on whether they can go into a woman's bathroom or not. Okay, that ought to be a woman, a biological woman's decision to whether to welcome you. Okay, biological women want to welcome safety into their communities. And it doesn't matter what you, you know, what, are you, what you call yourself. But, and control over their bodies. And not feel viol feel a need, uh, feel this uh, sense of fear of being violated because it can happen don't be fooled okay there are some transgender identified biological men out there that that possibly are raping women too okay I, I can remember that happening okay uh, you know so just do your research and understand that 
protecting biological women ought to be all of our responsibilities. Okay, because without a biological woman, this planet would not exist. Okay, there's going to be a separation. Trust me on that. But women want to be safe. It's not that they are les want to be lesbians or want to be this or that and the other. They want to be safe. Okay, right now they have no control over their bodies. Okay, we have a mostly majority men telling them how they're supposed to act and behave. Men in the medical fields, by the way, is what I'm talking about. And they're the ones wanting to decide what women are supposed to do with their bodies. And like I said, a lot of, a lot of men in the medical field have focused their attention now on cosmetics. It's not on preventive. It's not on caring. That's my opinion. And prove me wrong. All you got to do is look at the results. Anyone paying attention, pay attention to the results. And you ask yourself, are women being protected? Are biological women being protected by the medical field? Ask that question. Answer it. No one has to know. And if you get the, if you get, if, I, if you ask yourself, especially if you are in the medical field, providing care to everyone, but more specifically to the women, those of you in the reproductive field, like I said, it's a lot of men. Ask yourself silently to yourself, am I providing personal space, personal safety for biological women to be able to uh, reserve the right to what they decide to do with their bodies? Answer that question. And then if the answer is no, you have all the power in the world, all the free will in the world to make changes to that. Okay? It is about the safety of biological women on this planet. And I'm telling you, um, I can sense, like I said, I can look in the I used to look in the eyes of women when I was in the first responder field. And I saw the fear. I saw the panic. I saw the anxiety. And then when they saw my face, how I was able to calm it down. There are warriors out there like myself. There are protectors, they're defenders, and they're also lovers out there. They care about everyone. But if someone's behaving inhumanely, okay, you know, always t talking about how what they're going to do with their fucking penises, you know, and how, how, how great they are in bed, and usually they're not. Okay, so let's calm down. And look reflectively within you and say, okay, how am I protecting biological women and their children? How am I protecting biological women and their children? Okay? I'm going to send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. It's about universal love at the end of the day. And this subject will not go away. And trust me, I will be back.